Yes, indeed. And how do you deal with people and deal with their food needs, especially when they're about to take to the air? This operation must cater for anything from 6,000 meals a day up to 16,000 meals in high season. In one day, they must produce 40 different menus. People seem to think that in um, flight catering, that, uh, it's, that there's not much cooking skills involved at the factory production, but in fact, that's not correct. Paddy Keyes is the head production chef who supervises this complex operation. He lectures in Cahill Brew Street. He's conscious that it might seem like factory production. The basis of the place must be very good cooking, unless I have a good team of chefs, you know, performing their skills as well as possible. The end product is not going to be right. One of the team of chefs is Declan Dean, another college graduate and master chef student. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly. Pack up, let's fly away. But back at the college, the well-stocked larder is the beginning of the day's proceedings. There are the orders for food and drink, the baskets to be filled and checked before their destination of classroom, kitchen and restaurant. From larder to kitchen to table is the rhythm of the day here, as it's the rhythm of eating in home, hotel or restaurant. The food comes from the stores, the dry stores, and it comes from the larder. Uh, it's brought down on a trolley, and then the, each, each week we nominate a student to become head chef and it's that student's responsibility to check off the order to make sure that everything is there. Uh, once he has checked off the order, the class is broken up into various sections, as you can see in the kitchen. So each chef the party from that section then collects the, uh, the food that they require to do the dishes that are on today. The head chef will be responsible for actually looking up the dishes and writing the order, and also costing of the order. So it would give them some experience of, of head, chef, head chef's duties in the industry. The ultimate accolade for the novice is to reach the master chef's class. I spoke about this morning in our theory class. Today we're doing traditional roast duck. We're going to carve a traditional duck and we're also going to cook and serve. Jim Bo, the tutor here, is commonly described as a legend in his own lunchtime. In my estimation, the perfect chef is one who has love for food. I think if one loves food and one likes producing food, likes working with food, I think everything else would fall into place. Creativity, uh, cleanliness, everything. And once they have this great love for it, they're not going to give to anybody else something that they wouldn't eat themselves. We can display that. It's well relaxed. The budding young master chefs here travel on day release from far afield to experience the best of tuition in European and Oriental cooking. I learn something from these students every day. So anybody who thinks that they are qualified, and I, I, I don't like the word qualified, um, it, it tends to imply that you know everything about the job. I, I would suggest that one can simply go on and on and on. So much to be learned. and we can stick that to the back of the cooker and allow it to cook out. The next thing we would do is, is, our, is our vegetables, okay? So as you can see, we have a nice mixture of vegetables. We have peppers, we have green and green red peppers, and we have mange too, or snow peas, okay? So let's put those, let's, let's put those in, okay? Let's give those a, a, nice, a nice fry. Now, let those, let those cook. Let's finish off the beef with a, a little, bit of, little bit of oyster sauce. There. 
Let's thicken up this with a little bit of a little bit of corn flour. Okay, that's grand. Take it off. There you are. So let's, let's let's serve our our vegetables. Make sure so you can see how lovely and colourful the whole dish is. And there, there we have a nice our nice dish. We'll just sprinkle that now with some. Okay. So you can have a beef chow mein, you can have a chicken chow mein, you could have just vegetable chow mein. So it doesn't really matter. And it is tuition in the sugar and pastry cookery world you want that's also available. On the head here. Next step, I'm going to be here. Possibly put on a, give a bit of a hat. Keep the cake down very slow. Make sure it's stick on it. Because they're in business to make a profit. And if there isn't a profit, there won't be any business next year. My job is to sell the services of the college to industry and it would be all the expertise that we have here in the college I would make sure that industry knows about it and that they're able to access it and that the staff provide whatever services industry require. Yeah, no problem, we can help you with that. The type of service that we offer is we develop the... Bernadette McLaughlin is industrial liaison officer with the college, a recently established post. Thank you very much. See you then. Bye-bye. We have uh, three major European projects in hand at the moment. One is in uh, rural tourism, another one in information technology, and the third one is uh, the Food Product Development Centre. This is the Food Product Development Centre that we got uh, major funding from Europe as a result of the work that we carried out over the last uh, two years since the Industrial Liaison Office was set up. Its clinical cleanliness mirrors the preoccupation of the college's fourth school, food, science and environmental health. Now, one of the reasons they needed safe food was astronauts were going up in space and they didn't have any recourse to medical aid. So if they had food poisoning or were sick while they were up in space, it was very, very dangerous. In the Mercury Space Mission... Margaret Murphy, a lecturer in the school on what could go wrong in the world of food and the environment. Many of her students will graduate as environmental health officers. You take that one and you have a brainstorming session on what possibly can go wrong. People aren't very aware of how they're treating food. And we think a lot of the food poisoning is actually happening in the home because you haven't got very good refrigeration then. People are doing a one-week shop that's meant to do for the whole week, things like that. So the time temperature people aren't aware of. Um, listeria was very prevalent up to two years ago and one of the reasons was because we learned how to find it properly. So that you usually find buzzwords come up like that. But again, Ireland is good at food hygiene, it's just we need slightly more education and people to apply it practically. Dr. Marlene Proctor is head of this important school. Her own specialist research is in the area of fish farming. The quality of fish for consumption is affected by the methods of killing them. This is Dr. Proctor's present research project. But there is no present in education today, is her philosophy. The school's significant work and research is recognized in Europe. When I started to work in, uh, in Ireland after my Shannon training, I was told I was on the crest of a wave. I can still today say that to students who come in. That you're on the crest of a wave of a career which in the future may be as important in policy making and in world governance as any other. Because it allows people to integrate cross-culturally, cross the gender and cross the generation. 
And I don't think you can ask for more than that. We look forward to the European dimension because all of our students are qualified to operate across the borders. The Irish quality, I think, in terms of sort of the academic service that we provide to students and we provide to industry, I think it is very good quality. I think in relation to uh, other European countries that we would have a lot of dealings with in our European projects, you can see uh, they are very impressed and a lot of our European partners are very impressed with the college. Frank McMahon is deputy principal of the college. His experience has been sought on international assignments in the developing world. He's a keen European. Well, the EC have a general policy of trying to help Eastern Europe. Uh, they're anxious to expand the area of the common market and to bring East Europe up to the standards of Western Europe. And as part of that, they are devoting some funds to helping to assist the development of education. In our, our bet is, of course, in regard to tourism education. And down its 50 years, expansion has been the constant in this college's history. Every available space must be utilised. The construction this year of a new extension makes some think seriously of alternatives. Realistically, looking at our biggest industry as such, I, I think it's time to be looked at a whole new greenfield site. But, you know, the college has develop, developed to the maximum. I know from a point of view of location, it's great from that point of view, but from the point of view of, 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 of the children and, and uh, what's available in other colleges nowadays, I think it's, it's, it's very unfair to the industry that they're housed in, in, in such very tight circumstances in the centre of Dublin. And I think that, uh, you know, when you take a look at what it costs in other industries outside the hotel business to create one job, it costs less than half to create a job in the hotel industry, and it will always sustain itself. The name Carl Street has a particular meaning to our graduates. It has a particular meaning to the industry, both national and international. And whilst the attractions of a greenfield site are, are many, we wouldn't like to lose the, the sense of connection. And I would be very slow to lose that link in people's mind with Carl Street. It is, a, it is a term of endearment, both in the, from the point of view of our graduates and also from the point of view of the industry. Well, the war baby has outgrown her christening robes. This year, officially, she becomes the Dublin Institute of Technology. The name may change for the largest centre for catering for Ireland's hotel and tourist industry, but after the ball is over in the years to come, when graduate vaguely recognises graduate, it's on the cards that the greeting will be, weren't you at Cahalbrua Street?